Hello, Mr. <laughs> Johnson. Welcome to the interview. Uh, let me first start by introducing you to our audience. Uh, hello, guys. Today we are joined by Mr. George A. Johnson, the director of the film Pursuit of Freedom. Uh, he is a talented filmmaker whose whose previous films have won numerous awards uh, and have been screened at multiple film festivals at all over the world. Uh, thank you for joining us today, sir. Uh, so. Tell us about your film, Pursuit of Freedom. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And yeah, I'd love to tell you about the film. It's um, it's a true story. And it's about a woman who was um, abducted into the trafficking industry after her husband lost her in a card game, um, which you would think something like that would have happened 100 years ago, but it actually happened you know, about 15 years ago, which is crazy. Um, so the producer, Lonnie Norris, he was a missionary in the area, so he knew a lot of the people involved. And so he brought me this story, and I just could not believe that it was all true. And, and then we went around and we interviewed people involved, and we found out more. Uh, without giving out too much, the airplane situation really happened. The, the NSS, all, all of that actually happened, and it was uh, just mind-boggling to me. And so yeah, I said, yeah, we, we definitely need... To make a film out of this and so um yeah it's it's this journey of this woman who um you know her husband was kind of uh he had problems with drinking and gambling and and all of that so they sort of drifted from home to home and they'd stay with people as long as they would be tolerated and then they'd get kicked out and live somewhere else and so one day he uh he uh spent, gambled a little more than he could afford to pay and yes. so they took, they took her and so she spent three years in this dark cell and we spoke to her and um she said there were lots of women in this cell with her but it was so dark to this day she doesn't know what any of them look like they only know each other by their voices and their their bathroom was just a rusty coffee can and so i mean that those were the conditions she was in yeah so, i don't know about the real story but the visuals are truly brutal for me but, <laughs> i mean <laughs> I, I couldn't watch the the first half of the film without tears in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so what inspired you to, I guess, uh, like what inspired you to make this film? Is Was it faith or was it just the story of this woman, Anna? <clears throat> it was both. Um, I loved the faith aspect of it. Um, but I think what I really appreciated about this film and i just felt like we had to shine a light on was how all these people heard about this woman and her missing three children which i didn't mention before her, she didn't see her children for those three years they they disappeared that night too and then she when she finally escaped she had had the search for these three missing children and you had all these strangers who didn't know her didn't know the kids and they risked you know their church they risked their their freedom <laughs> to help reunite this family and i just thought man we need to shine a light on that because what a great example if, if i wish i could be more like that to where well i could go to jail but those kids need their mom i'm gonna help these kids get to their mom yes uh, uh, that uh, uh, mrs tell Cervantes scene was truly thrilling i guess oh. I, was, oh, I was at the edge of my seat uh, on that moment uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me carry on carry on that with uh, this question what was it like with, what was it like uh, uh, working with this talented cast and crew oh oh just phenomenal the, on both sides of the camera we just we were blessed with an incredible team um james burgess the director of photography um yeah we we actually had one distributor told me they thought they were watching a martin scorsese film for the first 30 minutes <laughs> yeah the the talent and then our our cast was just incredible i mean we we had we did some extensive casting to bring this to bring this uh, yeah yes yeah, so how, how long did it uh, did it take you to find the perfect fit for anna i guess i wanted to ask you do you know it's funny um we did uh, a little documentary about it at first mm -hmm. and the actress jessica colloyan had started my last film by neighbor and so i was like hey can you just help us out and star in this documentary we're just gonna you know we wanted to release it as a documentary first and then we got into it and realized um 
that we couldn't show their faces. We couldn't reveal their names because people might come looking for her if they found out she was still alive. So we had to kind of scrap the documentary. So then we did all the, the auditions process and we had hundreds, thousands of people auditioning for this. And it just kept coming back to Jessica. We're like, wow, she was so good in that documentary. And one thing that really stood out to me was in the documentary that we did, there was a scene where she was laying on this concrete, dirty, nasty basement, yes. right? And she's just like in this little nightgown thing. It's cold, it's dirty. She was laying there for like three hours while we were setting up lights and getting the shots and then changing the lighting and getting the shots. And I was like, do you need a break? Let, you know, let's, let's go get you some water. She goes, no, no, she... The, Anna was in this cell for three years. I think I can handle, I owe her three hours. And I was like, okay, she gets it. She gets it. She was, she was willing to be very uncomfortable to help, you know, uh, communicate with this, this person went through. And I thought, yeah, she's, she's the right one for this job. I mean, that's commitment, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. To be truly truthful, I was just afraid to say her name wrong. The actress, just Chloe. I guess I just wanted to yeah, hear you first say it first. <laughs> yes, yes. No, almost everybody gets it wrong, so you wouldn't be alone. <laughs> Uh, uh, the next question I would ask is, uh, what kind of difficulties did you face while uh, during the production of the film? Oh, um. There were a few. Uh, apparently, we we made some people upset. Um, I got some threatening messages sent to me. Uh, I had a, a a cooked goose left left in my driveway. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had things hung in our in our trees in our yard, so that, that we we made some in your house. Yeah, yeah. That That's was not scary. Yeah, yeah. Like while we were shooting. Um, you know, my kids were at the house and they, somebody had been there and left something hanging in a tree. So we had to relocate locate the kids to an undisclosed location while we finished filming. And yeah, it was, it was nuts. So, I mean, there was that. <laughs> and then there were the, uh, the normal difficulties with production as well. You know, um, little things, scheduling would run long. People got tired. Somebody knocked over a camera and broke a camera, and so we had. There were there were some difficulties like that, but um, overall, it was it was a great production. Everybody was, you know, great to work with. So yeah, it it, it came together pretty well. Well, the next question was: Are there anything interesting? Are there any interesting tidbits from behind the scenes? But <laughs> you just told me that. I just, <laughs> I I just actually... my next question. <laughs> You're the first one to know. I haven't told anybody else about that stuff. <laughs> um, I mean, that's just scary to hear. First, <laughs> I uh, hope your children are okay. First, <laughs> yes. Yes, every, everything's okay now. We're good. We got it all figured out. Um, but yeah, like even my email was hacked. Like it was it was nuts for a little while there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I also wanted to ask, how did making this film change you? I'm embarrassed to say it, it revealed to me that I knew very little about trafficking. Um, I thought I knew what it was. It's something that happened to a couple dozen people in some far off land somewhere. But as, as I did my research and, you know, put the time into understanding the subject matter, I was like, holy smokes, this is a much more prevalent thing than I thought. And, and so it's, uh, it's definitely increased my awareness of this, this issue and um, inspired another project or two in the works. Yeah. So you're you're going to dig deeper into the. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what do you hope the audiences will take away from the film? Uh, the I guess for me, my biggest takeaway <laughs> is uh, the world's not the the best in the best shape it's ever been. Everybody's got oh, difficulties. Yes. You know, it's it's you know it's it's a mess. And what I saw here was here was a person who had every reason to give up hope. She had every reason to just lay down and die and be like, this is never going to work. She was at the bottom, literally in a dark cell for three years. And still, uh, through the kindness and compassion of these people and through these miracles, you know, she got to a place where now she's, without spoiling, hopefully you've already seen the movie if you're seeing this, but she's, you know, 
in a much happier place now. And so it, are, are, are we frozen? Are you, are you able to hear me still? Looks like we might be frozen. Oh. I'll wait for you. Hey, go on. Hey, there you are. Did you hear me that whole time or did I lock up? Uh, you locked up, sir. Okay, no worries, no worries. So do you want to start again with that question? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, what, do you, um, what do you hope the audience will take away from you, the film The Pursuit of Freedom? Yeah, I think my biggest takeaway, and I, I think most people that see it um, have the same experience. This woman was literally at the bottom. She was in a dark cell for three years, laying on a concrete floor, um, going undergoing all this abuse. Her children were taken away. She couldn't stop thinking about them. Um, thought she'd never see them again. Didn't know if they were dead or alive. She had very little to live for. All the reason in the world to be depressed and to just give up. And she didn't. And through her persistence and through the kindness and compassion of people who didn't even know her, and these these miracles that took place, she's now in a much better place. And it it kind of revealed to me, I've never been in a situation like that. I've I've felt low. I've had some low times. And sometimes when you're down there, it feels like there's, you know, it's over. There's nothing, you know, nothing good that can come from this. And it just it showed me that no matter how bad things get, there's always hope that your life can be restored. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know if if to ask this question or not because of the spoiler warning or because I I guess I have to add a spoiler warning now so I will ask the question. Uh, sure. By by the end of the film, uh, there were a lot uh, a lot of people saying there is only week left in her life, uh, and uh, I I read that she's still alive. I was I was just surprised to read that and very happy to read that because <laughs> my imagination was going wild. The children, how are the children who's raising them? <laughs> Yes, yes. That's it was it was amazing. She decided I'm going to see my children again. I will not die. Everybody's telling her you're going to die. A plane ride could kill you. You're so fragile. You're you're just a breath away from death. And she said, "Nope, I'm going to see my children and my grandchildren." I think it's either 72 or 74. She said, "I'm going to be live to be 72 or 74, whichever it was." And everybody's like, "You're crazy. There's no way." Well, here we are. 10 years later, she still has the sickness. She still struggles with her health, but she's still alive. She's got her kids in her life. Um, I mean, she's she's just doing it. I described to, to Jessica and to the actors, I said, basically, this person, this woman, it's basically she's a, a dead body, but her spirit is dragging it to her kids. Like she just, her spirit just wouldn't give up. And it's and that's the way she is now. She her body has every reason to be dead, but she just won't die. <laughs> she's just she's she's driven and motivated to live and to enjoy her kids. I mean, the word incredible seems to be too small for this story. I mean, <laughs> I just was vowed at the end. Really, it was impressive. Uh, <laughs> uh, mm, this was my last question, but uh, are there any future projects you would like to tell us about? Oh, yes. I'm actually um, today working on finishing up the script for a movie called Carol. And are you familiar with the Charles Dickens uh, Christmas Carol with Scrooge? Yes. yes yeah. Yes. Okay. It's a modern day um, twist on that story, but it's a musical. And I've never done a musical before. I've done lots of music videos. But I've never done a movie with singing and dancing on all that. So we're going to be shooting in January, February. And uh, yeah, that, that's going to be a fun one. So it's coming out next Christmas, I guess. Yes. Yep. <laughs> right. Uh, so I don't know. I, I don't have many, any more questions. So thank you very much for taking the time to be, with you, to be here with us today. Thank Absolutely. You, oh, such a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you.